Hey guys, Remy and I have a brand new episode for you today where he is going to take us inside the most dangerous worldwide black markets that he's encountered in his work since retiring from the Navy SEALs. So thank you for giving this episode a click. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and that like button as well. She goes down to DR, gets the procedure done, wakes up, she's fine, flies back to the States. She's not feeling right. Just like, man, why am I not, why am I feeling fatigued? I'm feeling lightheaded. Why am I not feeling right? She goes to the doctor. Doctor runs all of these tests on her and he's like, yeah, something going on. I can't pinpoint. Takes an MRI, comes back. He's like, you know you only have one kidney. And then the light went off, off in her head. He oh. took my kidney. Who was it that took her kidney? It was a doctor. Remy Adeleke, Yo, welcome up? to the studio, brother. Thank you for coming in here so short notice. Oh, good. Thank you for having me, my brother. Looking so, forward to it. Dude, you got a little book tour going on here? Is that, like is that. that what's happening? A <laughs> little bit of everything. I'm always torn with, with a bunch of bags and things in my bag. What's this about? Uh, it's I, I say it's a fictional extension of my memoir, Transformed. Um, you know, I have my background, I'm sure we'll get into it, but my background is in human intelligence, but then I also have a background in Nigeria. I was born in Nigeria, had a had a tough, uh, tough upbringing after I left Nigeria, after my dad died, came to the States. So it's very loosely based off of uh, my life. It's all of the stuff that uh, that I wish I could have done mm. <laughs> at the highest levels in the, in, in the agency, um, but, you know, still based off some of the human stuff that I was able to do. Did you have to get the stuff you wrote in this one, in this fictional one, cleared yeah. through DOD? Yeah, yeah, you can send, yeah. shit, send every book, man. Yeah. Send every book, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they don't f*** around with yeah, that Yeah, and they're trying to get caught up. <laughs> but they might have been reading it and they're like, oh, wait, so the main character is a Nigerian guy, yeah. came to America. Wait a minute, yeah. so this looks a little familiar right yeah, here. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, very similar. All right, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to digging into it, but yeah. I want to talk about you today yep. and, and your life and, and what you did and, yeah. and what you've been doing since the Navy SEALs as well. I know you've done a ton of work with human trafficking. Yeah. You made an amazing short film. It was like a 35-minute film yeah. called The Unexpected, yeah, yeah. which is how I found you because yeah, I watched yeah. that back in, I think, January it was. Okay. And that what, I love how you did it, but taking yeah. it backwards of like the whole quote-unquote supply chain of yeah. how... You know, someone buys an illegal organ for yeah. a transplant. It was it was sickening to watch. But yeah. you were telling me just now off cam, you have that being picked up to do a full movie on yep. it too. Yep, it's already been picked up by uh, G Base, which is Gerard Butler's production company. Oh wow! Uh, and uh, Alan Siegel, um, and we already got financing from a uh, from a, um, a Micro Bowie and his his financing team, and we already started casting. So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a big movie, man. And wow. we're, we're we're gonna really be able to. It's gonna be an action thriller because you know you got to put the pill in the cake right you know you got to put the pill in the put cake the pill in the cake you know kids don't like medication they don't like medicine so how do you get them to take ah. medicine sometimes you put the pill in it and, and it is a tough topic um but it's a very educational topic and so you know i'm, I'm dressing it with, it's an action thriller but at the same time we are going to be you know educating on the realities of organ harvesting the statistics how it happens and so on and so forth so people don't just get entertained but they get something out of the film they walk away having learned something about organ harvesting because there's not a lot of uh, entities or organizations that focus on organ harvesting um a lot of people focus on trafficking but yeah. not on the organ harvesting side of things so the film will help with that yeah it's not something like you hear all about human trafficking, that's people are talking about that on social media all yeah. the time, but you don't really hear about like organ harvesting, which is yeah. it's another form of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. just a part of it. Yeah. But how did you get like, did you is this something you were exposed to during your career as a Navy SEAL, or is this more it came up because obviously you're a Navy SEAL, highly yeah. trained to be able to learn about things, and you were asked to come in and help with this stuff? Well, I'll say when I got out of the military, I didn't even know what the word human trafficking meant, <laughs> which is interesting, but when I was in. I want to say that I was exposed to different a different form of it. You know, I remember um, gathering intelligence on a guy that we were going after, and my source informed me that he has like three or four wives, 
and his oldest wife was like 17. His, he had just taken on a new wife. His new wife was 12. Oh and, my so, God. And, and, and so, you know, to me, that's tra- I mean, the, the, his of course, I, I don't know if he took the girls as his as his as his wives or if the parents sold these young girls to him. Um, he had like a 13 or 14 year old wife that was pregnant. And this guy's like in his mid 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 30s. Right. So, um, I again, at the time, it was just like, hey, this is somewhat part of the culture or what, you know, this specific these specific bad guys or group does. So like but I did it add the tag human trafficking because I didn't know what human trafficking was yeah. it wasn't until i got out and then i got contacted by a few different human trafficking nonprofits to come help and volunteer in different ways then i then i learned i mean the first trip i went on went on was up to sacramento and i uh was helping out with a human trafficking nonprofit up there this lady reached out to me she's like i heard your story and i run this human trafficking nonprofit in sacramento we have a huge issue a lot of these with a lot of kids and and, and women and and people coming from mexico and, and and making their way getting up getting up here and being promised what was it specifically though like trafficking also so, trafficking. yeah it was specifically specifically trafficking and that's when i learned i was like well what is human trafficking and she explained it to me and then i was like yo sign me up so i went up there and yeah man that was my first exposure to it and that's when she really began to show me more about it and then interestingly then i began to have other nonprofits not connected to her at all like reach out to me you know say hey can you even if it's something as little as a fundraiser can you just come here and come and speak sure. at this fundraiser to help you know raise some money you know another nonprofit. hey would you mind going overseas or hey would you mind doing x y and z and donating some time you know to to uh, uh to you know speaking to to uh, victims of um who were uh who were trafficked and so it was like a it was like a plethora of different things and and that's kind of how i learned all about it are you allowed to talk about like somewhat specifically what you did on that first one, say in Sacramento yeah, when so, you went up there? Yeah, so part of it was uh, going up, and and one part of it was raising money. So I, had, I spoke in front of a group that okay. was going to uh, you know donate some money to this specific human trafficking nonprofit, and two, she took me around the city um, to some aftercare um, clinics. They call it I'm only going to call it aftercare clinic, but aftercare sanctuaries where I got to kind of sit with traffic victims and hear their stories and try to bring some form of comfort to them and and so on and so forth it didn't involve me going after anybody or, or anything God. like that or, or going but but it, and it also we partnered with the police as well so the police were a part of it so she was she's really educated on the human trafficking piece so um she was i went with her to like you know a police station or whatever the case may be so that she can give a class and, and talk about it. And, and then so, and then also she was able to share statistics with me. Mm. Well, she was sharing it with the police, but I was there and directly share with me, like, here's what's going on in Sacramento. Here's how many kids are being trafficked. Here's how much money some of these guys are bringing in. Here's the areas in Sacramento that you guys need to be more aware of. So it, it was really all of that. So it wasn't the actual me going to kick it down the door or anything, doing anything like that. Was there across like the different victims you spoke with, was mm. there a common story? I mean, you said they were all trafficking victims, yeah. but was yeah. there some sort of like common thread that tied them all together? Poverty. Mm. Poverty. Um, you know, a lot of them came from a, uh, a poor background, whether it was uh, victims who came from Mexico and somehow was promised some type of sanctuary in Sacramento and then they got to Sacramento and was trafficked or whether it was, you know, victims who were born and raised in Sacramento and maybe a family member, you know, them out or did oh, did whatever they did. And yeah. And so um, the common thread was these were all people who came from a very very poor background and so they were easily manipulated these were people that were essentially they were targets and that's what across the board when you look at when you look at different forms of human trafficking the traffickers are always looking for the most vulnerable people yeah. and one of the key ways in my opinion one of the ways to get rid of which we'll never get rid of as long as there's human beings we're never going to get rid of human trafficking but the one of the ways to combat it is the first combat poverty as much as we can you yes. know what i mean because that's where it's, i mean case in point um vice did a whole story on this down in uh mexico and they were following an actual organ har uh, organ harvesting trafficker they were following this guy he had a mask on goggles and all these you know to hide his disguise and he was going up to people on the street like poor people like people hanging on and say hey are you in good health it's, it's a yeah, yeah i'm in good health uh how you looking on money uh you know i'm not in a good good way when it comes to money. Um, you want to make some money? Yeah, I'd like to make some money. 
Um, what is it going to require? How's your kidney? Oh. You can get X. You can get X amount of dollars for a kidney. Really? It's all. It's all on. It's all on YouTube. People could kind of Google. Just Google vice and organ harvesting, and the, and the, the film will pop up. Now that example you give right there yeah. though is a kidney, right? So yeah. hypothetically, that guy can, can still go survive. in. Yep. He'll survive. Yep. He'll give a kidney. That's crazy. Shouldn't yep. happen. But to be clear, like. That's not what your film yeah, was showing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you can we talk about yeah, that? Can 100%. you just go through the premise there yeah. and and what you showed? Because I'd love yeah. to dig into how prevalent this is. Yeah. And stats, you know. So let, yeah. let's just start there. Yeah. So let, let me just talk about the different forms of organ harvesting uh, as it relates to how victims are got. You have the example that I just shared, where you have the winning participant, somewhat of the winning participant, the person who's poor, down and out. This is this is uh, well known in Cairo, Egypt. is considered to be the organ harvesting capital of the world because you have a lot of migrants from different parts of Africa that are trying to cross the Mediterranean and get into Europe, or even get into Jordan, get into other parts so that they can have a better life. And so they end up getting stuck in Egypt, and then they get approached by traffickers who are like, "Hey, uh, I know you're poor. Know you're trying to get out of this particular situation. I can give you a thousand dollars, or I can give you. I'm just throwing out a random number. I'm saying that's not the exact number. Or I can give you eight hundred dollars if you sell us a kidney." Some of this is done via social media some of this is done on websites but that's essentially that's like more so the winning participant um another example of that is uh a story that just came out two months ago uh or three months ago this nigerian guy was uh, approached by a senator a nigerian senator and, and his wife um who has a, who had and still has a sick daughter who needs a new kidney they have a prop they live in london so they, i believe they had dual citizenship they have a citizenship in london they also had citizenship in nigeria they essentially told this guy hey we'll give you seven thousand dollars if you come up here to uh uh to um to the uk he gets up to the uk they say, hey, you need to go get a, go to this hospital and get this checkup and tell them that you're going to be giving a kidney, right? And so he goes there and he starts to process. And what the uh, person that was interviewing this this guy noticed that there was something particularly off. And he was because he was he they once he got there, that's when they told him what was going to happen. Yeah. So that's when it began to shift from winning. I already gave those winning examples to like. So, sort of duping, right? Yeah, tricking, yeah, of course, so to speak, right? And so he uh, he gets there and he essentially confesses that this these two Nigerians got me up here and and the case they just got prosecuted like two months ago. This was uh, in the UK. This you was said? in the UK. Nigerian senator and his wife um, organ harvesting. If you just Google that, that'll pop up. Um, um, Nigerian senator wife jailed in UK for yeah, organ harvest plot. Two there ago. it is. Yeah. And so, wow. yeah, <laughs> and so that's the dupe. Now, um, I'll give another example of dupe before I get to the forced, because I want I want people to understand that there's different levels to it, to this. Actually, let me give one more, because uh, this is something you could also look up on open source before I get to get give another example of the dupe, the winning. There was a story out of Costa Rica in 2000, and I want to say 2016, 2017, as an Israeli doctor moved from Israel to uh, Costa Rica, and he was brokering kidney deals yeah. down in Costa Rica. Uh, so if an Israeli or even somebody from a different you know, part of the West needed a kidney, they would reach out to him. He would go up to a poor person, offer them some money, and they would willingly give it up. So you got the winning, you got the dupe. Uh, uh, another example of the dupe is uh, there was a, in 2018, there was a woman in New Delhi, again, another big story. This was international news. Um, she, was in, she, was, she was in India. She received a message from somebody in New Delhi saying, hey, I got a new I got a job for you. Um, obviously, we know the caste system is something that's very, yes. very prevalent in, in India. And so this for was, people that don't know, can you just give them yeah, a so quick the caste background? system is essentially it's it's these different tiers of uh, class well, class. Essentially, mm -hmm. it's you, you have like very, very poor bottom of the bottom poor. Right. Then you have poor. Then you have yeah, poor, poor. Then you have poor. Then you have, you know, uh, you know, and, middle class but every middle class and you have rich for the yeah. most part right and they literally yeah. like don't associate with each with other lower yep. like there's yep. like laws yep. you can't marry it. into right? uh, somebody from a different caste well yeah. i don't know if it I, I can't remember if it's laws i just know that it's more so forbidden like your family will disown you if somebody from, right. a, yes. from a rich class you know goes down tear down into and tries to marry somebody in a poor or a lower caste right and so she was in a very low caste and uh and so she got this email hey 
um, there's a job opportunity for you in New Delhi. All you got to do is just come up here. We'll pay for your travel. Just get up here. They pay for a travel guy there. Uh, the, uh, the, the employee, employer, excuse me, I say that in air quotes, says to her, um, all right, you just need to go get a medical exam tomorrow. Uh, once you get this medical exam, that'll clear you and you can start your work. She goes to the clinic, starts her medical procedure, medical exam, excuse me, and she, well, she gets undressed uh, before she starts the exam. And the nurse leaves the room so that she can get undressed. She overheard the nurse in the other room say to the doctor, this woman's giving these organs. And that's what saved her life. Essentially, she got up, got dressed, ran out of the clinic because it's known. I mean, organ harvesting is a big thing in India as well. And so it's something that's known. It's something that's like they they know what's going on. So, so she... Uh, Ran to the authorities, uh, alerted them, and the they said organs. Organ, yeah. So she was gonna die. Yeah, she was on. Well, I can't recall the story. I know for a fact that they were taking at least one organ. That's what I know. That's what I know for a fact. I, I can't remember if it was a kidney or what, but I know that they were taking an organ. I don't want to say organs, and then you know. But it, it, again, this story is not fresh in my mind. But it could have been multiple organs by no sure. at a minimum it was an organ. Uh, again, this is something you could pull up on Google because it was an international story. Just Google New Delhi um, um, organ harvesting um, ring busted or something like that. Because I think that she played a role in that organ harvesting ring getting, uh, I think that might be it. It was a multi, yeah, I think yeah, it might be because it was 2016. They uncovered a multi- million dollar organ harvesting ring yeah police in new delhi have made a number of arrests in connection with a suspected organ harvesting scheme operating out of one of the city's most prestigious private hospitals yeah. five people remain in custody after being arrested for illegally trading human kidneys yeah this is from cnn back in 2016 i guess that might have been it um there's a bunch either of, way there's a bunch of the stories point. out there yeah yeah, yeah yeah and so that's the person that was duped that's the person that was told hey come here and I'll gi I'll give you this, you know what I mean. And then it's a bait and switch. It's yeah. not I'm coming to this place and getting a job. It's like I'm coming to this place and I'm losing an organ or I'm losing organs. Another example of the dupe, which now I'm going to transition from the dupe to the forced, because this is a dupe then a force. Um, there was a story that came out last year, October of 2022. A woman in Mexico, um, she's searching for love finds love on the internet on some dating app the guy she finds is in peru he's a med school student she travels out there oh, no. um um long story short her body parts washed up on the beach oh. um faceless uh faceless head uh part of her torso when they found her torso all her organs this have is been the taken one you out. were telling me in the car yeah or uh. all her organs have been taken out this was a nash this was an international news story and the guy got caught catch this because he was selling her organs i can't believe if it was on i can't remember if it was on social media or some some app or the black he was he was selling her organs on uh on the black market and that's how he got caught and uh, uh, and this was in Peru, and she lost her life because again she was duped in a way. But then he got her, and he forced her organs out. What does the black market for organs look like? Well, like where's that done? How's it done? Is any of it dark web based lot, now at this point? I would it, assume a lot of it is social media. Literally so through the socials. It, a, lot, a lot of it is through social. Well, a lot of it is through social media and websites. I'll get to the social media piece. Okay. Um, during the dur during COVID. We know that statistics found that um, uh, there was a 22% increase, I want to say, on Facebook um, of uh, human trafficking or recruitment via social, via Instagram or, or Facebook. I can't remember. Maybe it was both. And then it was like a 30% on – no, it was a 22% on Facebook, like a 30% increase on Instagram. Now, how do they define – I mean, it's all bad. But yeah, yeah. when they're saying human trafficking – They're not – they're not divvying it up. They're just saying human trafficking. They're not saying it's organ harvesting. They just, it was just okay. human trafficking during COVID. I can't believe like any of, of the most serious end of that, though, yeah. like organ harvesting could ever even occur without a system flagging it right away. Well, no, because people use, I mean, what you could create fake accounts, yeah. hashtags, you Keyword. know, different ways to, to different ways to mes message people. For example, you know, we i think a, the 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 person a, a person who uses social media often takes for granted hashtags right yeah. in the sense that oh i'm going to put a hashtag cuz i want more people to see my posts 
but you but who are those people that are seeing your posts so a good example is like somebody who if maybe a, a parent has a child that's on dialysis and you know they need a new kidney to survive and they go to their doctor's appointment and they take a picture of their kid or they take a picture of themselves and they and it's hashtag dialysis hashtag bad appointment or good appointment today hashtag hoping for a miracle hashtag praying for a miracle whatever all you, these traffickers search these hashtags oh my god right as a matter of fact again i know i'm jumping around but there was no a, this is great there Keep was going. a story there was a story that came out two or three two years ago Actually, I think it, it was either the last Dallas Mavericks playoff game or the Mavericks playoff. No, it was it was la it wasn't this past playoff season. It was the season before that. Um, this girl, she goes to a basketball game, Mavericks playoff basketball game with her dad. Gets up to go use the bathroom, doesn't come back. Right. Um, um, he goes up, tries to find her. She's not there. Game ends. Can't find her. No one can find her. Long story short. Um, he he told the cops, hey, listen, I think my daughter's been abducted. This is not like her to run away. Cops said, hey, she's she's just a runaway. They wrote it off as a runaway. He found a human trafficking nonprofit. I think this was in Texas. And that nonprofit searched the dark web, found her on the dark web. Oh she was God. being sold for uh and and um they carried they partnered with the local police, carried out a sting on this house and found her. And and I think it was like two or three of the people that were at the house were at the game. How did they find her? Social media. From like a hashtag. They built a, they built a relationship with her through social media. And when she went to the bathroom, she willingly, from what I remember, just Google, like look that oh, up. Uh, Dallas she Mavericks. Went with them. But it was again, it was a dupe. It wasn't like, hey, I'm going with you so you can sell me for um, Dallas Mavericks human trafficking victim, something like that. Fifteen-year-old girl. Okay, let's click this article. This is from a local news station out there. Police have arrested the man accused of luring a fifteen-year-old girl away from a Dallas Mavericks game in April. The team was ultimately trafficked to Oklahoma City and yep. was forced into prostitution, according to her family's attorney. Dallas police said officers with the U.S. Marshals Task Force arrested thirty-three-year-old Emmanuel Cartagena yep. this past Thursday on an outstanding warrant for the soul of a child. Cartagena allegedly met the 15-year-old victim outside the American Airlines Center during a Mavs game on April 8th. Her family said she went to the restroom and did not return to her seat. Surveillance video showed her leaving the arena with the suspect. Police say Cartagena took the victim to the house in Dallas and assaulted her. She was located in Oklahoma City about 10 days later. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, and it, it, there's more articles on it, but there's an article where they found her via social media I think they came to the game. It was, you know, and there's these ploys now where they're using kind of like the catfishing, where they're using other teenagers as boys and saying, hey, yeah. like pictures, other pictures of other teenagers saying, hey, I like you, but let's get, I'm going I'm to be at the game when you're going to be at the game. Some let's of go, them got to be, yeah, some of them got to be convincing. Yeah. You know, I, I'm sure you see it all the time. Yeah. Anytime you follow any kind of account, usually I notice of like a celebrity, in this mm -hmm. case, like a female celebrity. Mm -hmm. You will instantly have, I don't know if you've seen this as well, Brad, but you, you'll instantly have these accounts that are usually tagged new, so you yeah. can tell right away, yep. with some slamming hot chick yep. follow you. Yep. Yep. She's got a bunch of fake pictures, yep. no likes, you know, yep. three following yep. on it. And I'm like, all right, they're really, they're losing ground over here. But yeah. that's just got to be the worst example of like no effort. There's yep. got to be some, like you're saying, where it's like, oh, you know, they have 600 followers or something, yeah. a long history on there, yeah. and they make people believe. Yeah, they create these accounts. As a matter of fact, I know I'm jumping around. I'm super sorry. There was a story that came out. Uh, uh, again, I, I keep saying it because I've researched this. I study all this organ harvest and stuff to nausea. But there's a story that came out like two months ago. This kid committed suicide. Uh, he, I think he was on a baseball team somewhere in Midwest, somewhere in the Midwest. Good kid, straight A student, because uh, there was an account that followed him on Instagram, and uh, they uh, uh, it was looked like a girl, a beautiful white girl, teenager yeah. his age, and it was two Nigerians in Nigeria. Oh. And they were sending him messages like, I want to get, I can't wait to see you. And then the Nigerians like eventually, hey, send me pictures of you naked. Send me pictures of you naked. Like, I, I can't, I want to see what you look like. So when we have X, Y, and Z, again, I'm paraphrasing the story for the sake of time. He does this. Then they say, all right, you need to give me, give us $40,000 or $50,000. Can't remember the exact number. And he's like, I don't have that kind of money. All the messages are, I think, were on the story. 
and uh, he didn't have the money. And then I think he sent them like five thousand dollars. And they're like, "We want more. We want the fifty thousand. And they kept on tormenting him, saying, "We're gonna expose you to everybody." And it was a girl like saying she was oh. gonna expose him. And but it was actually these two Nigerians. He ended up committing suicide. And so social media is a driver for this. It's so easy to create accounts. It's so easy to delete accounts. It's so easy to search on hashtags. I mean, now you know I tell people all the time we have to think of social media as like being out walking down the street. Yes. You know, like like and and and, and you know you, you can't treat it like you're in this private space because in reality you're not. You know, the the internet, social media has become the world. To a lot of people you could reach people from around the world just like you know the organ harvesting film i have people from around the world that watch that film that wouldn't have watched a film without youtube being a social media platform right and so uh we it, we have to learn to put those same barriers and and those same checks and balances in place around social media accounts and people who follow us and people who message us as we would if somebody was to come up to us on the street <laughs> yeah i mean it's a, it's a digital world yeah it's yeah. it's like when obviously the whole with crypto and everything tank and people have been talking about the metaverse and stuff yeah, left yeah, yeah. And yeah. less but you know that concept is still very much in the works yeah, and yeah. you see what they're trying to do and the the thing i could never wrap my head around is how people didn't see how we already had the bootloader yeah, to yeah. That. like not even a bootloader like a form of it because yeah. people are different people on there yeah 100%. but they're also incredibly revealing yeah. unknowing yes. Yes. of who they are and yeah. what you're talking about is revealing in the most innocuous of ways yes. you know using hashtags or like yep. answering a dm with yep. somebody yeah but you see it at the layer of something like that story of the kid which is horrible committing yeah. suicide from something like that but then it also goes to you get a girl to to leave a stadium with you yeah you know yeah. and and this is how like you know we've all we've all heard these stories we i'm i'm guilty of it too like we throw around these terms yeah. human trafficking and stuff yeah. but this this is this is i guess like the the main boiling point of of how it goes down yeah. and then around the world I would imagine, as you've seen, being a Navy SEAL, and we're, we're going to get to your whole background yeah. and everything for people listening right now who aren't familiar. But, you know, I would imagine it's even a lot easier than that in places that are severely poverty-stricken, yes. third-world countries. Yeah. They walk up, and you were telling me in the car, you you did one. I don't know where this was. Yeah, we toward DR, Dominican Republic. You want to tell people about that? Yeah, that yeah. Was, yeah. That just that makes you sick to your stomach. Yeah, no. So I uh, was uh, with a human trafficking nonprofit, and uh, we went down to DR. Part of what we were supposed to be doing was educating the parents on not selling their daughters to traffickers. Because, educating the parents on yeah, not selling, selling their daughters. daughters to traffickers. Yeah, because in this particular slum that we were in, the parents would sell their daughters to traffickers. Traffickers would take their daughters to the northern part of DR, and Americans and other Westerners would come have sex with these Hold girls. on a minute. So you had to educate the parents not to do that. Yeah, and I want instead of calling the cops. Yeah, because not like that I mean, exists. But I'm I saying, I mean, the cops do exist. But at the end of the day, it's like holy shit. You know, it's we, we don't have the same. They, the, a lot of people think that the same systems that are in place here in America oh, are the no, same yeah, systems yeah. in place in other parts that. of the world. No, I'm not saying you do. Think, I'm, yeah, and, and and so it's like you know, it's 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 a different world, and especially as you get further and further away. That's why you get a lot of these people who go up to other countries and they they act as though they have the same rights as they have in America, and then they quickly <laughs> find out they don't. No, you don't. You know, I mean, and so, uh, so yeah, we were down there, and I just remember being so perturbed, you know, as a father of two boys. Uh, I, I, it was just hard for me, and I've always been good at keeping my composure. Um, and our guide recognized that I was like, I was kind of out of it, I wasn't able to really effectively do my job because it was, I was like in somewhat of a daze. And uh, he pulled me aside and pulled me into this chapel that was no bigger than the size of two toilet stalls. And at the end of the chapel was a six month old uh, uh, old baby that was dead in a casket. It was a funeral service, uh, and, and what two toilet? I mean, two handicapped toilet stalls. So it wasn't two uh, toilets. Of two of them so bigger. Small. Yeah. And uh, um, um, he used that as a teaching moment for me. And essentially, what he was saying was that this is why their parents are doing what they're doing. Like it all goes back to what we were saying earlier: poverty, desperation. Why was the baby dead? So the baby died because the mother had uh, uh, she her sustenance ran out, her breast milk ran out. So she was she had mixed the local water, the slum water, with formula, Ugh. and the for and that's what ultimately killed the baby. So essentially, what he was trying to show me was this is their plight: either they sell their daughter, and they get food and water and other stuff for their other kids, right, or they don't, and all their kids die, and it doesn't justify it. 
it doesn't make it understandable, but it gives you the tools that you need to be able to better communicate to the parents, right? And communicate to the people in this particular slum. And so um, that, and again, that falls under the wedding side of it, right? Um, so uh, back, back to the social media piece, because I had this thought right before we jumped to that topic, to that story. Well, well I'll back up. That was the inspiration. That began the, the, that was the start of me essentially saying I need to make a film. Because when I got back from that trip, I had a few voicemails from Mike Case and text messages. Mike Case is Michael Bay's producing partner. Mm. And he was like, hey, Bay, we've been trying to get in contact with you because Bay's starting his new film, Six Underground, and he'd like for you to be the consultant on it. And and he was like, where are you? And I was like, dude, I've been, I was out of it. I was like, man, I've been down in DR. And he was yeah. like, all right. And he was like, can you, can you start today? I was like, I can't start today, but I can start like next week or something like that. And um, after I got off the phone, that's when these two worlds collided. The human trafficking piece that I was just exposed to, tangible saw, and then the film and TV piece. And in my mind, I was just like, I could go down to South America, DR, Haiti a hundred times and try to educate parents or pull kids out of these, these trafficking rings and rescue them and do all that all day long. Or I could have a bigger impact mm. via film and TV. Right, I can reach more people. Right, I, I I don't know what the view count is on that on my on the on the film. I think it's like somewhere around forty five thousand uh, forty five thousand views. But at this point, you know, forty five thousand people have potentially seen the film. Yeah, and let's hope I've, we get a few more in there. Link yeah. down in the description. Yeah, and I've had so many people say to me, "Hey, thank you for making this film because I didn't know that this happens. I didn't know that it was real. I thought it was a conspiracy. I didn't know that things happen like this. Our world is evil, and I want to do something. Whether that's donate to a human trafficking nonprofit, whether that's volunteer their time with a human trafficking nonprofit, whether it's as simple as, I've had people say, dude, I went on a website, on a human trafficking website, and I just took a class on how to recognize the signs and symptoms of a yeah. human trafficking victim. And, and, and that was what I wanted. And, and that all came from coming back from that trip, having that voicemail and those two worlds colliding and saying, I, can, I, I need to have a bigger impact. And the best way I can have a bigger impact is through film and TV because people won't read books on this. People, Most people won't go down to other places and or even go in their own communities like Sacramento and and and, and engage in the fighting human trafficking, even if it's as simple as volunteering in an aftercare clinic. People won't read you know books and articles, but they will watch a movie. They will do that. And if I, if I can get them to watch a movie, then I can engage more people in, into this fight. Because you're telling, I mean, it comes back to the most core thing in human history, throughout yeah. history. You're telling story. a story. Story. People, yeah. are, people are affected by things that even if it's, they can't relate to it, mm -hmm. they could find a way to put themselves themselves somewhat in that situation. You did that very effectively. Thank you. With with that film. And and what it, you know, for for the people out there who haven't seen it again, the link is in the description. I would highly recommend you go watch it. But yeah. and I'm looking forward to the full feature yeah, yeah. You, you get to do with it yeah. now. That's awesome that yeah. you're doing that. But you know, what it's showing is is the the you did like a a backward timeline. Yeah, yeah. So you start with the end yeah, yeah. where you show you know, some rich white couple from America yeah. down in Mexico yeah. and they get informed by a doctor that their yeah. son is going to live. He yeah. just got this transplant for something. Yeah. And then you show how it, how that organ got to the hospital yeah, yeah. and the guy, the medical person who brought it. Yeah. And then you show where the medical person met these other people yeah. and then where they met these other and all the way down. And yeah. I won't give it away, but you end up showing quite literally yeah. the source yeah. Yeah. and what happens. Yeah. And this is where we get to like the whole forced Yeah acquisition yeah is that what you call it like yeah it's just force it's just force just like force i mean forced marriage yeah is a i don't want to put of, like business yeah. terms no nah, forced this, marriage obviously. is a form of of human trafficking as well but yeah yeah i uh i decided to tell i was trying to figure out when i wrote the script it was a tough write because it's based on true events one um oh you based it on some you Okay. It's based on true event. Not something that I've that I witnessed or saw, but some so I'm trying not to give away too much so that people don't go watch the film and be like, he already now I know No, you we, gotta watch but, it. But no there's what. there's 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 victims in it. Well, you know the victims, right? And those victims are from a specific group. Yes. Uh and uh uh, uh that group had a genocide carried out against them around 2015. 14. 2014, 2015. Oh, I didn't realize though. Yeah. Hey, don't, give it away, don't give it right, away. Don't give it away. I'll bleep it out. Yeah, I'll bleep it out. Yeah, yeah. Because, it, because remember, the guy asked him. He at, at the end of the film, towards the end of the film, he says, "Are they Shiite or?" Oh shit! I totally and missed that. And he said, "There." 
So those, so that so that was the first genocide. That, that's the most recent genocide that the that the UN recognized. Yeah, that was a, was that genocide because yeah. the, the 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 men were killed, the women were used, were taken, and the girls, and they were used for trafficking, organ harvesting, and uh, some other bad crazy thing. And, and this it, is quite literally something because we'll get to your career and timeline. This yeah. is quite literally something you had a front row seat. Yes, to. yes, yes. And so so wow. again, that's why I say I. I, I I didn't make it up. All I had to yeah. do was do the research and find and pull stuff together and 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 know history and it's based on true events. You know, it's based on a genocide that the UN had recognized and and the UN recognizes that these this, the girls and were all and yes. women and boys in some cases were used for multiple forms of human trafficking. Yeah. Um yeah. um so uh so yeah, so I I decided to tell the story backwards because that was the only way I I could I could find my way into the story. Because it's like, uh, you know, at the end of the story, we all want somewhat of a happy ending. We were talking about the hero's journey offline. And uh, and uh, even if we, whether consciously or unconsciously, when we watch a story, we're all waiting for that happy ending. And there's no way you no. could tell a happy ending. And I didn't want to... I didn't want to fabricate it to the point or take away from its authenticity by just giving some happy ending where they get rescued. And so the way I had to do it was tell the story backwards. Well, it was, it was, you know it was genius mean? to do it that way. And yeah. I fully understand that because it's not, you know, you want to get a message out and it sucks because you have to entertain. Yeah, yeah. Right? And yeah. we you were talking about, who was that guy right before we were on camera who invented, who wrote that book that you're doing a documentary, maybe? Oh, Joseph Campbell's Hero's right. Journey, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that guy outlined how a story's told, and this is how people want it. They yeah. want everything to tie together like a bow, but sometimes yeah. tying together like the bow, it's a piece of shit. Yeah. Because that's the reality. Exactly. And that's what people got to know. Yeah. But, you know, Remy, it's it, it's interesting to have this, on this specific topic, like this discussion yeah. today, because right now, there's a movie that's came out this past summer that- yeah called sound of freedom yeah, yeah. which covers this yeah. and i believe you have some background working with yep. what's the what's oh you are operation underground railroad right yep. so that's who it's based on yeah and it's based on the worst things that do happen around the world but i find myself in and this is just one example mm -hmm. with high octane type things yeah. the worst kinds of things i find myself so frustrated in this conversation because Number one, we know human trafficking happens. Yep. It happens here. Yep. It's not just something that happens in like some quote unquote horrible country with, yep. with a horrible economic situation yep. somewhere yeah, it's else. A 30, it's a 30 plus billion dollar industry in the US, 130 billion, I believe, globally. 130 billion uh, globally. globally. Now it's hard to really, because uh, it's not like traffickers are turning their <laughs> yeah, tax yeah, return, doing their taxes every year, but, <laughs> but but based off of the the amount of people yeah. and and rings that have been busted, and you know it's it's a it's a multi hundred thirty plus billion dollar industry. Yeah, well that's, that's big money, and nuts. that's and again and that's not just again that's not just trafficking that's all of yeah, the yeah, forms. Yeah, yeah. You know that's the organ side. That's the forced Human marriage. Human trafficking. That's the yeah. even you know you know be more clear on this blood trafficking which is something that you know there's a story that came out of vietnam um uh last year a uh, chinese guy traveled to vietnam he was abducted by a gang the gang uh uh that that was na international news as well just uh google blood traffic victim china china chinese um i think vietnam or cambodia one of them All right, let's try vietnam first trafficking victim says Vic this is 2022 here we go yeah from Vice. Yeah. Trafficking victim says captors harvested his blood for month. The man is the latest to come forward alleging dis disturbing abuse in the Cambodian city of- Cambodia, yeah. I thought it was Vietnam. I'm not going to yeah. fuck that up. Yeah. It's some city in Cambodia, yeah. which has grown into a haven for Chinese scammers. Lying prone- All right. It's a whole like narrative story, so yeah, I'm not going to yeah, read yeah, it. Yeah, but, it's, it's okay. a bunch of, It was a big story. There's a bunch of d different outlets that did stories on it, but that's a form of trafficking as well, blood trafficking. And I want again, I wanted to get that up there, and I wanted to clarify because I know that- I don't know all of the stuff that the QAnon. I don't even know what QAnon is. This is all what that I stuff, to bring up. But I yeah. do know that there is some. There is talk amongst that group of blood, Adreno, some stuff yes. that I don't even know. I so I want to d d delineate that I'm not talking about that harvesting people's blood for some satanic rituals. I'm talking about harvesting this guy's blood and to sell. Well, let, let, yeah. let me cut you off there yeah. because th you're getting at exactly what, yeah. what, I, what I wanted <laughs> to say here. What happens to me, like I do believe that yeah. there's – there is a reason to keep a divided society. Yeah. I, I think that the yeah. internet is a, an amazing tool for the yeah. people who want to do that to do so. 
and it doesn't all it certainly doesn't necessarily come from this country yeah right yeah, yeah, you try yeah. to beat something from the inside yeah, yeah and so what ends up happening is is the different sides move farther and farther apart left yeah, and right yeah and there's certain certain subjects yeah. they take up as their own yeah, yeah you could say right yeah, yeah. and so you take something like human trafficking mm -hmm. Which you just laid out, hundred estimated one hundred thirty billion dollar yep. industry around the world. Yep. It happens. Yep. It's bad. It's yep. something we should. All, every human being should be yeah. able to get behind. Every good human being yeah, yeah, yeah. should be able to get behind. Like, oh, let's figure out how to stop this. Yeah. So you take a truth, and then you know, in what is clearly an intelligence operation with QAnon, yeah. you know, you you put out all this other shit on top of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You say Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton are sucking up the blood of children yeah, to get yeah. their elixir. First of all, yeah. if you gave me a flashlight, Indiana Jones, in 24 hours, yeah, yeah. and I went to find Hillary Clinton's fucking, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be able to find yeah. it. So if that's what she's doing, <laughs> yeah. then it ain't working. Yeah, yeah. Let's just start there. Yeah, yeah. But they go through all these things that are full-blown conspiracies with no evidence, yeah. and then what happens? It's like a burger that I serve yeah. to you with insects on yes, it. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I, if I take off the insects, I say, oh, you're good now. You're like, no, give me a new fucking burger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you put human trafficking in the middle yeah. of that, and now when it comes up, what's the first branding yeah. that a yeah. lot of people think of? Oh, is that all the fucking QAnon yeah, exactly. people once yeah, again? exactly. And I got to think for a guy like you, <sighs> yeah. that has to be so fucking it, frustrating. It is, man. It is frustrating, especially when I get messages, dude. Even on, you know, yep. when I get, I got a comment on, uh... So I think I can't remember if it was Twitter or something like that. After when I cause when I posted the um, like a clip or a trailer to uh, the unexpected on there, and it's like, oh, here's this conspiracy theory yep. stuff. This I'm like conspiracy. Like, dude, I've seen this stuff happen. Like, I, like it's, it's it's like open source information from yes. every outlet, liberal, conservative, everything in between. Like, yeah, I'm we're not, reading from Vice right yeah, there, yeah, to be clear. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that same article can be found on CNN, Fox, yep. and every other outlet, BBC, everyone. And so it, 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 it is infuriating, and yes. I hate how it's just been so politicized, and it's been, well, that's this group's fight, and that group's crazy. And so, yeah, man, it's, it, it is infuriating. And, and that's why, like, that's why, like, I, I pushed hard to make this now i'll back up for a second dude when i that film didn't start out as a film it started out as a treatment for a tv show so i wrote a, what, tr a the treatment? unexpected what do you mean so by treatment? treatment is essentially like when you want to pitch a tv show to a studio or network like and you want to you want to get paid for it you don't want not when i say get paid you don't want to do it on spec so when you write a when you write a script on spec it's called speculation okay which means you're just writing it but it may never get made right and so when you write a treatment it's easier to write a treatment than it is to write a bi or write a uh, a pilot and a series bible. So so when mm -hmm. when it comes to TV, you write the pilot, which is the first episode, and then you write a series bible, which breaks down all of the characters and it breaks down everything that's going to happen in the season. That's a lot of work. That's like writing a freaking book. That's a lot of work. And so what what um, creators like myself will do is we'll create a treatment. Which is just treatment is like a summary of absolutely everything, a summary of the characters. You could do a treatment anywhere between nine pages and 30 pages if you want to, but it doesn't have to be that long. And then you submit that treatment to different studios, networks, streamers. They read and they're like, all right, we love this idea. We want to commission this as a TV show. Here's the here, here's the resources, whether it's money or whatever the case may be, or whether it's money or whether it's money to go hire a writer or whether it's a writer they have on staff to write the pilot and write the series Bible, right? And so I wrote it as a treatment first for a TV series. And so that short film, that, that, the opening of the short film, well, the opening of the, uh, of the treatment, like the opening, opening episode, I think the first five, 10 minutes was that short film. Mm. So I just took that, I just took, uh, the, the opening of the, of the, uh, TV pilot and I stretched it out it. to that short film. And I tried like night and day to sell it. Like my agents tried to like get somebody to you know pick it up so that we can make it because it's an important topic, and it was just like ah oh, we don't want to do that nobody wants to hear that's a controversial topic. Th this nobody is what I mean, man. No, no one wants oh. to make that right now. It's too controversial. Blah 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 blah. And it comes from the fact that you have people who have said dumb stuff yes. or you know who shouldn't probably be the advocates advocating for this because you know. And it, it, it's it's an uphill battle, bro. And so that's why finally, you know, Brad will tell you, dude, like after like a year and a half, I want to say, or maybe even like 
a yeah, like around a year and a half, I said, screw it. I'm done with trying to, I'm just going to, I put up my own money. I spent about 150 grand of my own money. And I said, I'm going to just go ahead and make this film. Like Brad was next door in the office. I said, yo, bro. I said, I had an epiphany. I was like, I'm done. I'm nuking this. I'm making this harder than I need to be making it. We're going to make it. He's like, I was like, we're going to make this movie. He's like, what are you talking about? What movie? I was like, the unexpected. What do you mean you're going to make this movie? I was like, we're going to make it. We're just going to do it as a short. He's mm -hmm. like, how are we going to do it? I was like, dude, I got my buddy in Kansas. You know, he's a filmmaker. And like, he's been trying to get me to uh, make something out there. We're going to, and literally from two, uh, was it two weeks later or three weeks later? Uh, I think it was 16 days on the dot. Yeah, 16 right days later. we were conversation in the office yeah. to filming was... Wow. Yeah, 16 days later, we were in Kansas City, full crew, cast, you know, actors, all that stuff. We're out there making a movie. And it was because I got tired of waiting on people to give me permission to make something that needed to be made so that I could educate people, that, you know, so they they could see that this is real. And that's why I, I stretched it out. A lot of people were like, why you got to make it 32 minutes? Like, short films are supposed to be 10 minutes. It's like, well, I won't be able to do the story justice in 10 minutes. I can't afford to do a movie, but I can afford to do this in 30 minutes so people could understand the full process yeah. and see how it works and also see how intricate these organ harvesting rings are and how intelligent these people are. As a matter of fact, I was talking about uh, Cairo, Egypt early. Cairo, Egypt is considered to be the organ harvesting capital of the world because, like as I mentioned earlier, a lot of migrants come up to Egypt and they try to get into other parts and they get stuck there, right? And so there was an organ harvesting ring that was busted in 2017, I want to say, or 2000, yeah, 2017. And of the of the 45 people that were detained and arrested, the majority of them were doctors and nurses. And I'm bringing that up because when a people hear of human trafficking and whether it's organ harvesting, it's Traffic, whatever the case, they think of those those people that we saw on the screen yeah. who took that girl, right? And yeah, yeah, you get a lot of those guys, right? You get a lot of those guys and women. But you showed like, you grunting. showed other people in your yeah. doctor, yeah. Yeah, but 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 when these these people that are operating at that high level with the organ harvesting side, of, these are intel. These are there's doctors and nurses that are involved. There's smart people that are involved. You know. Cartel, drug cartel people, for the most part, the guys at the top are really, really smart, yes. brilliant no, people. You know what I mean? We're not talking about some dude that stands on the corner and sells, you know, you know, that's dime true. bags. We're talking about very intelligent people. They're running a sophisticated enterprise, and that's how these rings are run. They're run pretty much flawlessly. Something, even, you know, we know what we see here, but even yeah. thinking about this on a global scale, something about, you know, the highest level protectors of people right yeah. like doctors nurses well-educated people yep. obviously yep. smart they're quite literally their job is to try to help people when yep. they walk through their door there's yep. just something about that that when you hear they take some cash payment to yep. do something like yeah. this yeah it just defends something so deep inside you yeah. I, I imagine i speak for a lot of people 100 percent, 100 percent. hey dude there, there was a story i know i keep saying there's a story because like it's I said, great there's a lot there of them was, there, yeah, was, there was a story that them. came out uh Earlier this year, I want to say February of this year, um, this girl goes, she uh, gets contact, she finds a human trafficking, she finds a, uh, not a human trafficking, she wants to get a, uh, what's it, a tummy tuck. Mm -hmm. She wants to get a tummy tuck, can't afford the what it costs to get a tummy tuck here in the States, here in Miami, New York, you know, LA is too expensive. Uh, I can't remember Somebody on social media reached out to her or gave her the contact. Somebody she knew gave her the contact for uh, a, a, um, a social media, uh, Instagram page. And this particular doctor or group uh, did the plastic surgery. Again, I'm butchering it because I can't remember all okay. the details. I po actually, I posted the story on my social media, you know, I think in January or February when, it, when the story was breaking news. But anyway... Um, She's like, great. I can go. I can go down to DR and get a procedure done done that would cost I don't know twenty thousand dollars in the states. Get it done for four thousand dollars or five thousand dollars in DR. Sign me up. She goes down to DR, gets the procedure done. Wakes up. She's fine. Flies back to the states. She's not feeling right. Just like, man, why am I not? Why am I feeling fatigued? Why am I feeling lightheaded? Why is like? Why am I not feeling right? She goes to the doctor. Doctor runs all of these tests on her. And he's like, yeah, something going on. I can't pinpoint it. Let's take an MRI. Takes an MRI. Comes back. He's like, you know you only have one kidney. Son of a bitch. 
She's like, what? No. He's like, you have, so you have one kidney. What, 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 what happened? I don't know. I just went down to I DR. Lost to, it. <laughs> I went down to DR to get a tummy tuck. Oh my God. And then the light went off in her head. He Ugh. took my kidney. Who was it that took her kidney? It was a doctor. Who was it that chopped up that poor woman from Mexico in Peru? It was a med school student. So you're not dealing with the who the Costa Rican um, uh, organ harvesting ring down in Costa Rica with the Israeli doctor, right? You're dealing with very intelligent people. Um, we want to go even deeper with what's what has happened in China with the prisoners. You know Can what I mean? Can you talk about that? Because yeah. that's like kind of you're talking about the Uyghurs, right? Not no, not not just the Uyghurs, but the prisoners. Oh, just re- prisoners. Oh, please do on, tell on, on death row. Yeah, I don't think I know. Oh, much it's, about it's well this. known. Yeah, so 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 uh, it's they say they've stopped, but they say they never did it. They say they stopped, but there's been a bunch of information out there about prisoners on death row, essentially, you know getting their organs taken before they're executed right and some of the by the way some of these people who are on death row are on death row for like shoplifting yeah yeah i don't know uh yeah. you know better than i do uh and there's an actual surgeon who who left who, who fled sought asylum in london there's a story about him on uh on youtube let's put a uh, surgeon uh escapes to london chinese surgeon escapes to london for organ harvest. And for Todi Bugda, an oncology cert. Was ordered by the uh, yeah, first of all, uh, Oh, no, that's that's a different guy. How I Exposed the Chinese Government's Crimes. That's Lad Bible. This 20. guy right here. That's this probably, guy right here. This is the yeah. guy. Um, On Vice. Yeah, it's called that, China Kills Prisoners and Harvest Their Organs. Yeah, he I'll tells put that link story. in the, in the he description. Tells, like, he breaks it all down, man. It's, 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 it's crazy, but... Uh, so but what, yeah, what, and, what did he say? Like he was just breaking down how it happens. How you know they they he told a story about how uh, some guys got executed, and uh, as soon as they, they hit the, this was the first first time he was involved in taking the organs out. Some guys got executed. He essentially was not in the outdoor area where the execution took place. Somebody got him. Was like, yo, it's your first day or whatever the case may be. Come come out. He gets out there just like. You know, you got X amount of time to get these organs, get liver, get the kidney out, quick, get it out, get it out, get it out. He gets it out, and then he then it began. Then he began to learn, you know, why he was there, and and it, he began to discover more cases. Again, I'm butchering it because I, I mean I haven't heard the story in a while, but but more cases of him having to pull out organs. And uh, I want to say it's that same report actually, where uh, uh, um, uh, a reporter or uh, NGO says something like in 2000 and for 2006 he got reporting that 11,000 tourists came to China and and purchased organs again that was that was just on that on that on the on in the article or something like that so you're getting westerners americans yes uk israel whoever you're getting westerners who are traveling to other countries whether it be china whether it be south america like i showed in my short film whether it be going down to tj to get these procedures done and you know again it all goes back to these people are desperate they have a loved one that may be dying and they're like hey no harm no foul or in a lot of these cases maybe the people don't even know that the person that they're getting the organ from was murdered or, you know, maybe they, they, it's a bait and switch. Now, know? here's a quick hole to poke in this, though, mm-hmm. and I'm probably naive to ask this, yeah. but how can we not catch this easier? And the reason I say that is because even if you're like a really rich person mm-hmm. who, you know, has access to people and wh- whatever the hell they rich people do, mm-hmm. to go over and, and get organs covertly, when someone needs an organ transplant, mm-hmm. there's a record for that because then they got to get put on a list, right? Yeah, so yeah, if yeah, suddenly, yeah. you know, little fucking Timmy over here who needed a liver transplant in in May of this yeah. of this past year and oh now he doesn't need one, why is that? Who's going to come after him for that though? Who's going to you know, it's like 4,000 to 5,000 people in America die every year from not being a get a uh, uh, on a kidney waiting list. That's not that high of a number though is my point. How can we not like yeah, Well, that's just a kidney. Right. You know, so, so now extrapolate that across, you know, 20 other organs. I don't know. Yeah, but just think about how many people in the world, you know, how many people are in need versus how many people are, are, are able to be able to give those 
organs legitimately. But if we had 100,000 people every year on yeah. some sort of organ donation need yeah. list yeah, yeah. in America, and it's a, it's a centralized list, because yeah. I, I mean, I luckily knock on wood, I've never needed yeah. one, so I, I, I don't know I, about I'm that, not yeah. fully yeah. aware, but I know like someone gets a call like, oh, we got one for you, you're yeah. up next on the list. Yeah. So there's some sort of repository yeah. that has you in order. Yeah. So if suddenly, you know, number 504 on that list suddenly isn't on there and he's not dead. Yeah, but who's going to go and who's going to take the time? Who's going to spend the money to go research or go investigate the one out of the or the 10 out of the people I'm giving my tax money to? Yeah, but they they don't have the resource. The government doesn't have the resources to go do that. I don't I mean, what I mean is they won't allot the resources to go do that. Why not? I don't know. I don't, it seems I mean, like you know, a real let, quick let, fix. Let, let, to me, me. let me back up for a second. I don't know. I don't. I don't think they have the resources to go do something like that. And if they do, I don't know why they want it. So I don't know the answer to that. To be honest with you, but it, that does seem like a simple answer. If somebody is on the organ waiting list, and then one day they are off the list, and they have fine and Johnny on the spot. Why not go investigate them? Yeah, it's just you know. But there's what's the crime? Like for like like because and in, in investigate somebody you got to be able to. What do you mean? What's the crime? What what I mean is that and I'm talking from the perspective of the uh, the government. Like what do we? Why are we? Because right in order for me to be investigated, I need to. What is it? Uh, what's the term? What's the legal term? Um, probable cause. Yeah, yeah. How do you prove probable cause? They left the list. There's my is, cause. But is that an, is that enough probable cause? Fuck yeah! It's, and, okay. As someone who does, I'm just care devil, a lot I, about conf, yeah, I'm, constitutional I'm just rights. Fuck advocate, yeah! You know that's, what I mean? That's yeah. now when a cop says to you, "Oh, I pulled you over because I saw you swerving within your own lane." That's not good probable cause. Yeah. That doesn't even exist. Yeah. You can't swerve within your own yeah. lane. Yeah. Right, but yeah. if someone says you were a number five hundred four on the list, and I'm watching you play volleyball right now yeah. a year later, and you're not on the list anymore, that's that's probable cause. To yeah, me. but I, I agree with you. That would be the easy fix. But I'm just trying to figure out from a legal standpoint. Sure, sure I understand. How is it going to happen in the sense that just let's just say I'm the person that received the organ. Okay. Okay. By the way, if you don't mind, just stay oh, talking. Oh, sorry, if you got to pull sorry, the sorry, mic sorry, up sorry, towards yeah, you, yeah, no problem. Yeah, like okay. sometimes you're talking over. All right, like sorry, us. sorry. Just watch that. But yeah, you're good. I was gonna say, what if I was the person that you know uh, received the organ? Cop knocks on my door. Hey, uh, uh, you. Uh, you're fine now. You you on a waiting list, organ waiting list. What's going on? This is not a communist country, right? So the so the person is not gonna. They have what a right to remain silent. Okay, I have a right to remain silent. Are you charging me with something? Uh, no. I'm just as I'm just asking you why you feel better. But like if you if you have a probable cause, right? Yeah. You take them downtown. You lift up their shirt and you see a 12-inch scar that wasn't there. Okay. But then the next question is, where'd you get the kidney from? Do they have to answer? I'm just trying to figure yeah, out from yeah, a legal yeah. standpoint. Yeah, no, like, this is good. Are, you're doing like, this. do they have to answer? And if and if they, you know, uh, I got it from, let's, just, let's say, hey, I got it from somebody. I, I went down to South America. I went down to Brazil and uh, they, I was, we were able to find a match down there. Mm. And they may not have. All right, well, have, uh, go down to Brazil. No, that's a good one. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that that's just I'm just, I'm just trying to reverse engineer to figure out like how like the solution at the end of the day I think is one. Not, I don't want to say the solutions, but I think one of the solutions to the problem is trying to figure out a way to to dismantle poverty or put a bigger microscope in the areas where they're the most vulnerable people to make sure that those wolves are not doing what they're doing to take advantage of the poor. Well, this is the other problem too. And it's the 500 pound elephant in the room that's yeah. been in everything you're saying today. But you pointed out the people who are at the top end of these transactions are not poor. Yeah, yeah. They're usually the, and I'm not just using the doctor nurses example. Those are the people doing it, which is sick. Yeah. But I'm saying like, the people who are driving it mm -hmm. and charge this whole thing yeah. are very wealthy people. Yeah, yeah. And very wealthy people in societies around the world are A, either very connected or B, they're a part of the connection. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we see it all the time. We've seen it. There was an island run by Jeffrey Epstein yeah, in, yeah. in the fucking middle of the Caribbean yeah, yeah. where some very wealthy people went. And yeah. in this case, with trafficking, yeah. were doing these horrible things to... to kids you know yeah. teenage girls 
we know what he did yeah. in particularly like as young as he went but yeah. you know people see things like this and they cynically go well how is it going to change because you know it's successfully being marketed with a certain loony bin type yeah, of people yeah, who yeah. put all this other shit on it number one so it gets less importance already we yeah. already covered that and yeah. b we've already seen them get away with yeah. it yeah yeah it's you know it's a global problem so it requires a global response it requires it requires more people like what we're doing right now yeah. on this podcast you know how many people are going to potentially listen to this podcast how many people are going to now now you know to to whom much is given much is much is uh required yeah. much is expected right so if anybody on the sound of our voices like it's like hey you're now in some way if you didn't know about this you're now somewhat in the know about this. Yes. Now, what are you going to do about it? And it doesn't have to be, and this goes back to the main reason why I made the film, main reason why I love ju jumping on podcasts and talking about this is because now that you know about it, now I can, I, you have a responsibility to either do something or not do something. You have a responsibility to do something about it. And it could be as simple as, like I said earlier, donating to a nonprofit, but finding a right nonprofit because you have a lot of human trafficking nonprofits out there that are not, they're taking the coin, but they ain't spending it on the work. You got some names to call out? Uh, 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 <laughs> You're not comfortable doing it? That's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying. But, 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 that, I, so I say do the research. Research the human trafficking nonprofits that How you're investing you, in. As a, as a layman, I'm a dude in a podcast yeah. chair right here in my parents' look at house. Their How do I research Look at that? their track record. Google them. See what stories have been written written about them. Vet those stories, just like I used to do as a, as a human guy. You know, it was like we were talking about offline. I couldn't just have a source come to me and be like, "The bad guys in that house down the street, go get them." Right? Yeah. That I had to be like, "Okay, let me take that. Let me see, one. Let me see how he's giving me that information. Let me read his body language. Let me read his history. Has he lied to me? Does he embellish?" All right, now after I've, I've been able to make a, an assessment on the information that he just gave me, now let me go vet that information against another source. Mm -hmm. Now let me go vet that information against SIGIT. Now let me go vet that information against ISR drone footage. Now, now let me go vet that information against other source um, intelligence reports. And then based off of all of that, now I can make a decision to go on an op. It all comes back to using the brain that we have been giving, given and, and doing the research in these nonprofits, not just saying, oh, this is a nonprofit that's doing great stuff. I've heard, Talking to multiple people. Yeah, Googling. there's something yeah. you can do. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. I, a little bit cynically there, yeah. like get access to the great US of A government right there like you had the best sources you're working with all yeah. the agencies right so yeah. when you go to check things out you you kind of know from a general standpoint like you're getting it from that primary source in yeah. a way what i worry about is the internet it has a lot of truth on it yeah. all over the yeah. place it's i i'm speaking for myself right yeah. here it's hard to pick out where that is sometimes yeah. because there's different angles and yeah. you know different people injecting things in the conversation yeah so I, i'm sure like to an extent you have to be right. Like there is some homework you can do to get an idea. Yeah. But I know there's got to be some organizations out there, not just with this, with yeah. with other important things too, where it's like they may you may not really find anything online that's like negative press per se, but that money doesn't really go to that. You know, I think that's yeah. a fear people have, and and I couldn't yeah. imagine doing that if I were running a charity. Yeah, but yeah. you know, it's good of you to point out that some of them are. Yeah. Yeah, so you got to do the research on the right nonprofit. Then one, you know, it could be going, a lot of these, not a lot, but a good number of human trafficking nonprofits, they have these free classes that you can take online that help to help you find, to help you learn the signs and symptoms of a traffic victim. And it doesn't take long. Some, some of these are like, for example, there's a story that came out of, uh, came out two, three years ago out of Atlanta, uh, an Atlanta-based, uh, I want to say Delta flight attendant. I can't remember the exact air, exact airline. She goes onto a human trafficking website, takes their 10-minute, 15-minute class on what the signs and symptoms of a traffic victim are. And then uh, she goes on her flights. One day, I can't remember how the time distance between the time she took the class and the time this event happened. She's on a flight. She sees a kid with an, with an adult male. And she recognized the sign and symptom. Oh, this kid is being really, really sheepish. This kid is being is is, is seems a, a bit timid and and frightened. His the clothes are a bit dirty. something's a bit off here. Um, she went into her uh, went into the cockpit, told the pilot, "Hey, I think we have or we got whatever phone is that they're able to call ahead to the next um 
to the next uh, landing spot destination. Right. Right. And uh, she says, hey, I think I think we have a traffic victim on board this plane. Can we have, you know, the police or somebody at the at the gateway when we land? And lo and behold, flight lands. Uh, the cops come, interview the kid, interview the guy, come to find out that kid was being trafficked. That kid had been abducted and was being moved to another state. Now, the... So that's one way people could, another way people could help. Sure, and, and that's that's a good one. I remember that story. Yeah. I, I remember that one, and, and that's that's great to hear someone caught it, but think about all the times, obviously, where it doesn't get caught. So yeah. if more people were, were informed, then maybe you could catch that. But the obvious here is that in these situations, trafficking victims, especially when they're minors, yeah. there is a there is a litany of psychological things that happen, I guess sometimes right away, yeah. where even when they're in public places, they don't, like, if you're sitting at home listening to that story and yeah. you don't think about it, you're yeah. like, oh, I just go to the guy next to me and say, I'm a trafficking victim. Get me out of here. Yeah. But they don't do that. Yeah. Have you yeah. studied, like, the different types of things that can instantly get these kids feeling like they're a prisoner even in public to these people? What do you mean? Like, yeah. like, are there tactics that these guys use, like, besides... I'm going to kill your whole family if you say something. Oh, it's, it's, well, I think it's, I don't know for a fact, but okay. I think that it's, it's, it's just basic brainwashing. It's basic um, um, instilling in the mind of the victim that they are inferior, that the victim is inferior over, and it may not take a, a long amount of time. It may be quick. It may be as quick as, hey, back to the back of the feet. You know what I mean? I don't know, but it's it's just getting the victim to understand that I control you. I'm up here and you're down here. You're nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's what you notice in a lot of abuse situations, yes. right? Why women don't leave men who beat them to a pulp all the time. Yes. My, my, my aunt, she was with her, you know, with her husband for a number. He would beat her to so bad she'd end up in the hospital, but she'd keep on going back. Yeah. Why? Because he instilled in her that you are down here and I am up here. I am God. Right, and so it's it's not just something that we see in in in, in kids; it's stuff that we see in adults sometimes. Yes. You know, so I think that it's that simple. I, I mean, I don't want to say that simple, but I think that that's part of the process is making the victim feel as though they are nothing. Yeah, and and on, this is a horrible word to use for it, but unfortunately, there when you look at the main predators in these types of situations, not just. Not just with kids, like you yeah. said, with, with adults and everything, they yeah. do seem to have in common a very, very particular set of skills yeah. for manipulation, manipulation yeah. and control. Yeah. yeah, you know, you read about it. Obviously, everyone reads the Epstein case. Yeah. Like if you yeah. read about him, if you read about Ghislaine Maxwell, especially, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she was that was no idiot. Yeah. That was a yeah. brilliant woman. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. she was a horrible, horrible person. Yeah. Well, she's still alive for now, yeah. but you know. She had unbelievable skills to get these young girls immediately trusting her and yeah. then not doing anything about yeah. it. And my, like, I understand how, how brainwashing can happen over time. What I get most shocked at that just doesn't process for me, but I know it's a yeah. real phenomenon, is when it happens right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a somewhat normal 15 year old kid maybe i'm from a little more poor of a background yeah. but otherwise i'm a pretty good kid whatever one day i get this person meets me takes me into their world and two days later it's like i was always in it. well but we got to remember too i don't think it's that it does it ever does happen that quick because you get a lot of victims who they're being trafficked I'm, like the woman who consulted on my film um, she was, she's, she was, um, still, might, still might be, she was on the, um, the human trafficking board for the White House. And so mm -hmm. we got connected and, and she could help consult on film. She, she spoke to the actresses and gave them insight and, and so that they could better get into the character, the two actresses who played the sisters. And, uh, she was trafficked by her grandfather in church, in church, in church to other, to other, uh, to other guys. She was pimped out. She was trafficked. She tells she told her whole story. She told her whole story. What's and she shared the story. Name? Oh, you remember her name? Can you look? You could look her up on the she's on she's credited on the film as a consultant. She's credited on the film as a yeah, consultant. Brad, can you look that up if you don't mind? Yeah. We'll, we'll keep going. Yeah, so 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 that was there was a process of her being, I don't even use the word word groomed, but being felt her, the the grandfather putting her in a situation where she felt comfortable, so she felt like this is my leader. I could trust him, and 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 that that happened, and then finally the switch comes, 
And when grandpa's saying, hey, go do this, and you've known this person pretty much your whole life, what do you do? You I mean, do th that, yeah. th look oh at the statistics God. as it relates to uh, kids who are sexually abused. Like, not yeah. traffic, just sexually abused. Yep. The majority of their, their assaulters are people they know. Close family members, close friends, you know, people who you would never expect would, uh, would, 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 would abuse a child. You know what I mean? I met guys in the military who, you know, when they opened up to me and talked to me about stuff that happened to them in the past, it was like they were abused by somebody that they knew, you know? Yeah, you hear that over and, and over. And they don't want to talk again. about it. Brad it just pulled shame. this up. Thank you. Yeah. Genesu Gen Jessen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that yeah, sound yeah, familiar? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, she, so she was the one. She's consulted on the film, and she's on. The, she was. I don't know. if She still is. But when we when she was working on the film, she was on the um, the human trafficking White House uh, task force or whatever again, or consult consulting for whatever it was. And uh, she was she was trafficked by her grandfather. So again, going back to the point is, I don't think it's as simple as they get snatched and automatically. Right. It's, I right. think like it's people that they feel comfortable with. It's just like the kids in the Bronx, right? Like. You know, when it comes to selling the drugs, teenagers, it's like they watch the pusher on the corner. They watch the doing like, They see his gold chain. They see the car. They see the Mercedes. They see the women loving. And it's like, yeah, and you know, big homie's like, yo, you want you want to get in on this, son? You want you want to run this run these drugs for me? You want to go do X, Y, and Z? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though that's detrimental to that kid, that kid can end up dead or in prison. Before before we end, what what are you what are you working on next? So you we got the book. Yeah. The link is going to be in the description. Yeah. It's Chameleon. Yeah. It's it's chameleon. It's yeah. basically, it's not an autobiography. No, it's but a yeah, fictional it's a extension. fictional story with a little extent, bit of yeah. a little bit of Remy in the main yeah, character. Yeah. And then, what was the name of your autobiography again from four uh, years ago? Uh, tr uh, my uh, my memoir was transformed. That got picked up to be a movie. So, oh, it's gonna be a movie. Yeah, yeah, it got picked up to be a big movie, man. So, uh, do we know who's playing you yet? Not yet. Not, not yet, yet. Not yet. We okay. still work. We got work that out after these strikes <laughs> God, oh yeah all yeah, that shit's still going yeah, on. it's yeah, crazy yeah. and we're making the unexpected into yeah. a feature film yeah so the unexpected short film got picked up to be a feature the feature version is called unexpected redemption it's a sequel it picks up five years after the event after the events of uh the unexpected so mm. it's so it's you know you got you got, you got tied in already yeah it's already tied in scripts already done um i'm directing it we already got financing on that and uh started casting and diego is in there still doing his thing and then, and then we it, but it, i don't want to give away too much but it's it connects very well and it's but it's it's a bigger scale story but at the same time, still educational, still Very really important. showing people yeah. the realities of organ harvesting, because that is, again, something that that's a subset of human trafficking that's not focused on much. Hey, guys, thank you for watching this episode. Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel before you leave. And also, as a reminder, we already released part one with Remy before this episode that you just watched. So you can check that out by hitting the link in the description or the link right next to me here on YouTube.